why are so many millennials leaving the church? And some of the responses that I got were very, very interesting. Hey everyone, I'm gonna be responding to segments from a video by a Christian minister, Alan Parr, who runs the Beat by Alan Parr YouTube channel. And in his video titled, Why Many Millennials Are Leaving the Church and How the Church Can Win Them Back, he lays out several reasons that people give for leaving the church. And then he goes on to question the validity of those reasons. I believe that he's genuine and he actually gives a damn about people's well-being. So I definitely respect him for the work that he does, but I definitely do not agree with him religiously. With that said, I'll be challenging some of the points that he makes in this video, and I believe that he misses and dismisses some of the underlying valid reasons why many ex-Christians and former churchgoers left in the first place. Why are so many millennials leaving the church? But the bigger question that I want to address in this video is what can we do as a church to hopefully win them back? Did you guys notice how that was worded? Millennials or anyone actually who leave the church can hopefully be won back? Well, I think this is a dangerous assumption that Christianity makes about people. They no longer attend church, therefore they are lost. This assumption links people's salvation with church attendance. So the first claim that many millennials will say about the church in terms of why they don't go is that the church is intolerant, or another word they may use is church people are judgmental. According to the Pew Research Center, 57% of all millennials believe that the church is too judgmental as compared to only 37% of baby boomers. So two things are happening here. The first thing is that you may feel like the church is too judgmental or intolerant because the church is promoting and preaching things that are going against what you want to do with your life and you don't like how that feels. Every religion is intolerant in some aspect. So it's not that people feel Christianity is intolerant. Christianity is intolerant solely for the fact that it is a religion. The Bible says men and women should get married, then that's intolerant for two people of the same gender wanting to get married. Also, if the church does teach that Jesus died for your sins and you'll go to hell if you don't believe that, then that is completely intolerant of people who don't believe that in the first place. Intolerance though isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that you have a set of standards that you're upholding. And when people leave the church, they generally have changed the standards that they want to uphold. That is one reason why I left Christianity. Christianity does uphold certain standards that I no longer agree with or even care to want to uphold. But there are still, of course, some standards that I still uphold in my current life. So yes, people leave the church because the church is, in fact, intolerant. And this is definitely not an attack on the church, by the way. I could say the same thing about any organization, like the military, for example, which is intolerant towards you wearing whatever you want to wear. You got to wear a uniform. So if you don't like it, don't join the military or leave. If you want to say somebody's intolerant or judgmental, you need to point the finger at God because God is the one who said these things are not good and these things are. This is also another big reason why people leave the church. They don't believe that God inspired the Bible or at least they don't believe that God inspired all of the Bible. And some people who leave Christianity believe that other books are inspired outside of the Bible. The popular Christian stance is that the Bible is the word of God. But the question is, which version of the Bible are you referring to? But some Christians may say, oh, but you know, you gotta read the Greek and the Hebrew texts, you know, that's where the real original Bible is. The truth is that there are no original texts of any portion of the Bible that are still in existence. Everything that we have today is a supposed translation of a translation or a copy. So there's no guarantee in people's minds anyways that God in fact said certain things or like these were the original things that God said or if it was just somebody that said God said these certain things and changed certain things over time. There's no real proof that God said these things. But you may say, well, what about the prophecies? They prove that God inspired the Bible, right? Well, I can also give you prophecies from Hindu texts, Buddhist texts, Islamic texts. So prophecies are not unique to just the Bible and Christianity. This is another reason why people leave. They are just tired of taking someone else's word about what God supposedly said. So is this a valid claim that the church is intolerant? 
I would say that's probably not valid. This right here is a typical dismissive Christian view, and I believe it's largely based on Bible passages like 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, as well as 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. These verses, they imply that any reason someone has for leaving is invalid because the Bible said that it would happen. It says that people will leave. But let's see where Alan Parr goes from here. The church is filled with hypocritical people, people that say one thing and do something else. Now, what I will say to a millennial on this one is that this, I believe, comes from an unrealistic expectation about what church people are supposed to be about. If you go to church and you're expecting everybody there to have it all together or to be perfect or to not be hypocritical any more than the people at your job or anywhere else that you go in the world, I think you're setting yourself up for an unrealistic expectation so that now when you peel back the layers of these people's lives and you see that they're struggling with different things, then now you're like, okay, well, I don't want to be a part of this because these people are hypocritical. What's interesting is that you don't quit your job if your job is filled with hypocritical people. You don't quit your fraternity or your sorority or your whatever group that you're in because they are also filled with hypocritical people. So is this a valid reason to not go to church because the church is filled with hypocritical people? Mm. No, I don't believe it is because if they are hypocritical, that's where they need to be anyway. That word hypocrite, by the way, comes from the Greek word hypocrites, meaning actor. What Alan describes here implies that churches are like a fraternity or a job. But the difference though that is completely missed is that a job or fraternity, they don't claim to be the truth or that they are led or inspired by God. The expectation is that if people are claiming to be led by the Holy Spirit and claiming to be born again, they would be living like it. So the expectation that Christianity and the church will bring about a new way of life comes from the very religion itself. Doesn't the Bible say, by your fruits you'll know them? Also the book of Matthew 12 verses 35 says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17, therefore if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old has gone, the new is here. So, like, come on, like, let's be real. When people are not seeing these transformations in others who claim to be born again or saved or guided by the Holy Spirit, what do you expect them to think? That's hypocrite, that's hypocrites in Greek, that is being an actor, you're playing a role. So this is definitely a valid reason. It just takes looking at the situation a little differently. The whole purpose of the church is not to just make everything and every sermon relevant to your life. It's to give you what they know you need in order to grow spiritually, even though it may not be completely relevant to your life. So is this claim valid? I guess you could say it's valid only from the perspective that I don't think that the church or the Bible was intended to always be perfectly relevant to your life. Alan does make a good point here. It's not always just about you as an individual. So yeah, good point. Let's take a look at that word relevant. It comes from the Latin word relevere, which means raising up. And this is, I think, where we get terms like, wow, that was very uplifting. And Chris Christianity may actually not be relevant for an individual based on their beliefs, perspectives, and their reasons. I'll give an example from my life. Before I left Christianity, I was told that if you have faith in God, you can accomplish all things. How do I have faith? Well, you know, I was told just read your Bible and pray. Okay, so this may work for others, but it didn't really work for me. I read books like Think and Grow Rich that taught me that my brain sends out vibrations and I can increase the strength of these vibrations if I did certain things to elevate my emotions, which leads to building faith. So the church for me was irrelevant in that sense because the words used didn't benefit me spiritually based on how my brain worked. Could I have learned this in church? Yeah. But could I have also gotten it outside of church? Yes, which I did. Other people have similar experiences. They may just need to hear things a different way. And that in and of itself is fine. The church is not really adding any major value to my life. Like it's not really beneficial in any way. I mean, at the end of the day, I can still have a thriving career. I can still have a great marriage. I can still raise great kids. I can still, um, I don't know, I can still uh, live a very moral life. And so at the end of the day, like, why do I even need to go to church in order to do any of these things? And the reality is that that's a valid claim. 
You don't. <laughs> you don't, right? So you don't need to go to church to for any of these things. But going to church, the bride of Christ, is what helps you grow closer to God. No, Alan. It's what helped you grow closer to who you believe God to be. Yes, you can have a moral life without God, but none of those things are going to get you closer to God. As we see, again, church attendance is linked to salvation, just like I brought up in my first point. Because somebody stops attending any local church doesn't mean that they're not part of the church overall. Like the term church has dual application. There's a local church as well as the entire body of believers and followers of Christ globally. Of course, going to church can definitely be a great experience, but it doesn't mean that going to church and meeting in a formal church structure is going to bring you closer to God. And let's look at the word church, by the way. I like looking at the root words. Ecclesia, that's what it means in Greek. And uh, the root comes from ek and kaleo, which means called out from. So according to the Bible, the church is anything where people are assembled or gathered. Matthew 18 verses 20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And the claim that nothing else other than the church is going to get somebody closer to God is once again tying people's salvation to going to church. But going to church, the bride of Christ, is what helps you grow closer to God. Yes, you can have a moral life without God, but none of those things are going to get you closer to God. People eventually get tired of this sort of rhetoric because that's actually not what the Bible even says. They leave because of that. If people are finding benefit with gathering amongst two or three of their closest people in their life, why are they at fault for that? And how is that not seen as them getting closer to God? Why do they have to attend church? On that note, that's where I'm gonna end this video. These are just some of my thoughts as to why I believe that people leave the church. Now, I wanna know what your thoughts were about my responses to Alan Parr's points. Is there anything that you think I personally missed or that I personally misunderstood? I noticed that there's often a lot of animosity between former Christians and the church and vice versa. And I believe that highlighting our different perspectives and understanding where others are coming from can really help to encourage and foster more positive relations with people who simply believe differently.